Hello everyone, I'm Overhaul and today I'll be reviewing My Hair Academia Chapter 228 And Jesus, can Hakoshi just reveal something about it to the Rocky family already? I mean by God, I know to the world the Rocky family is a mystery, but Jesus, can we please get at least for us as the audience knowing who and what alignment are the brothers of the Rocky family? But yeah, I'll get into that whole complaint later on the video. Let's get uh, right through this this uh, chapter. So we start this chapter where we left off with Darby facing Hood. Well, Hood, Hooded Figure, Snow Jacket, Winter Soldier. I've heard so many names of him, names of him that honestly, I'm surprised how quickly it get we got the names. So yeah. 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 Dami makes a little smarky comment about this hooded ice character well, figure about who he is and all that well, I mean who he is just oh, so they used you? well, you are a stronger fighter than the regular fighters because you didn't because until the very last second I didn't know this dude you were incapable, man and even I got stronger which I guess it could be a reference to the fight in the hideout radar where Gwento, you know, was easily phew, 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 quickly come um, out of nowhere and I'll, I'll be out while well, this character just appear, just phew, appear out of nowhere and bam, he was able to dodge it. Honest to God, even if Dobby was, would be aware of it, he would not be able to do anything because he was straight at that time. Or maybe come in Woods thing. Yeah, anyways, he makes a comment and then the hooded figure makes another comment saying League of Villains Darby Quirk Flame Quirks lo the only long range attacker which is true considering the fact that the only long range attackers was he and Quirkiri and Moonfish and Away Mustard but the other three were all captured so yeah now we are all long range attackers and he and the hood figure just says, "Why didn't you try to mail me immediately after I appeared? I mean, your quirk grants the ability to. Is it possible weakness?" So yeah, it's this comment that will really make people wonder who this hood figure is. The figure is. Because there's a fairy, which I'll get you know, a, a little bit later. But yeah, Dobby then has a little smirk, a little uh, Which I'm guessing is supposed to be alright, this guy is definitely more observant than the regular soldiers. Which does kind of put in my opinion that he's the gen one of the general. You know, like you have the Supreme Leader, that we that Redastro, then you have the Executive, Curious, Koku, and Skeptic, who is... To my also we found his code name. I don't know when we're gonna find out the name of Koku, but so far we know two of them. Then we have him, this ice captain who's a general, and then we have everyone else. Possibly the pro heroes are uh, members are a bit higher, but so far it doesn't seem to be like it. But yeah. Then W has some a little comment saying, well, in case you don't know, ice melts. So the uses his flames to melt the ice that what well, that that hooded figure was using. And Hood Figure is not impressed by it because his quirk, I don't exactly remember the name of it, but it's basically the quirk that allows him to manipulate every single form of well not every single ice that's in his area. And we find now that he's extremely versatile in using that. And Use is the multiple and very capable. How capable you may ask? 
Well, let's just say he just took enough amount of ice to a point that made something that looked like a Chinese dragon. You know, and how it would be in size, you know, real life size. So yeah, pretty capable. Now, this sort of figure explains that he cut school to practice his quirk, and then the Supreme Leader was helping him to have trained. Now, this is now this is important because there has been a big theory going around that this hooded figure is actually actually Natsuo Todoroki. Yeah, this is the theory that's been going around. I mean, not only the fact that he has an ice quirk and, well, Natsu was hinted at B having an ice quirk as well, if you go by like, hair color scheme and, well, the fact that we don't know his Natsu's quirk and for, so far we have, and it was never said that he had an art fire or ice top, it would make kind of sense, but yeah. So besides the whole ice we do search. There's also the fact that, well, there's a very going on that Dobby is Torto Doroki because he's such a mysterious character and at this point would be kind of considered a troll. Now, I originally thought that this character would be some kind of animalistic type character, you know, like he's a, either a animal with a quirk or a man who has a or a person with a quirk that, that has a mutation and the ice effect. But since we this chapter we find out the most likely reason why his giant hands had four fingers was because you know it would become because it would be kind of unnecessary to have an extra finger for for giant ice hands. But yeah. So we find this out. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the reasoning why and why Natsu would probably be this is because first of all, in this chapter he mentioned that he's been skipping school to get for that practicing of his work. Now, granted, this could imply that Natsu or uh, that this character just is an extremely like young person and it doesn't mean he must be be not so but then we remember the fact that in the first chapter that not so appears in well real time not in a flashback is in the chapter where Fuyumik mentions that apparently he has got himself a girlfriend and barely gets in contact with her. I mean, Grant also says, hey, I still write you sometimes. Which does make an open opportunity. Like, we know that he is in college, that Natsu is in college. And. Honestly, if he got himself a girlfriend, I could imagine there would be some reports that he's not coming to classes. So skipping school makes kind of so that could explain the whole skipping school type thing. Also, the Vikia stated, I don't know if this was because someone that can really tell a person's belt or if a woman did, but apparently Natsu is registered as a very uh, muscular muscular boy very muscular I don't know wait what kind of, I don't know where that comes from I mean I think all the clothes he's wearing were the types that would make him very apparent that he is that he seems more on average when it comes to physical builds I mean better than me but not better than like you know someone that doesn't have but you know, just the average, maybe uh, one sports, but nothing major. So if not so is this weird figure, and although we don't know how, how this weird figure looks like, but we can tell that he's pretty physically 
Faith can say the fact that when Dobby was using his flames to melt the giant ice block, he was just able to jump pretty high. But yeah, apparently Natsuo is very, very physically built. Built, and this character would kind of be fit in that description. Plus, I don't believe we got any size. Well, actually, I do believe we got Natsuo size, but I think we didn't. We don't have anything that we can really go by. When it comes, like I guess maybe we can assume the giant ro ice arms, but well, that's pretty much it. Much it. So yeah. Yeah. There's, so. So that, that's the whole fear with this hood figure to be not so. Which in case not so is. Is this hood figure. And that'll be Istoria because in this arc we are finding out more about the history of the League of Villains, so it would make sense. Makes me wonder what will be the fate of Natsuo? Like if I mean what will Dobby do if he finds out that this is Natsu to the Roki? Will he just be like Will he just put his arms down and say Go home? The UC is gonna get wiped out. Just leave. It's for your own safety. Or it, will he just like knock Natsu down and he'll like drag him to the police station and just throw him there? Or will he just keep or will he just have Kopaska compress him and then I don't know, they're just gonna throw take him back like, to home or something. I don't know. I don't know, because Dobby hasn't really shown us any malicious attempt to the Todoroki sons. It's well children technically, I mean grant that we don't for endeavor he did show malicious attack that makes sense if he is Toya. Shoto he just said so sad like kinda okay, mocking him. But he didn't say anything but he didn't seem to be like extremely I must kill you. Hell the whole burst of flames was just there to get the off to get the them off of Kimpaska. And I want we'd have no idea. So yeah, we don't know exactly. And consider the fact in the flashback, Victoria to the other ones, he did seem to be kind of in a good relationship with the other ones. But yeah, yeah. This it, also there's an important line that this also leads into being Toya to the rope. Well, we this hood figure being hood. Being not so is the fact that he says, I've been training for it for longer than even some pro heroes have. Which, alright, let's see. Natsu is 19, and, and, he, and if he went to the college and he lives in the dorm rooms, you can do that when you're like 15 or 14 in my case. Case, I don't know when he not so his birthday day because I do believe it was revealed and I don't also know how the school works so maybe he went to the college and he lives in the dorms when he was fourteen. But the only thing I know is that he said that he trained his work longer than the pro heroes do, which can say the fact that pro heroes train their works for like I believe three years, and he has been training his and that would. Give not so four years of training does make it more or plus I feel like plus he would probably change it for longer than a pro hero because you know it's not school so yeah which also the whole thing how he said but the pro heroes thing kind of also makes me think why did he have to mention that he trains more than the pro heroes can that interests me, me, but yeah, this could this could still just be a teenager that's around not so age, but so far we don't know. Now, anyways, we cut from that level five after they make a big clash of power, and when I I say big clash of power, I mean a giant ice dragon, a giant wall of flames, that seem to make two story store buildings, links only half their sizes, well not even half I believe, I mean, 
I think it's I think it was like there are the two story store buildings and then it's like this. Like take this size and make it this. Here's where I can't believe they are in this size thing. But yeah, that's how it, we go by the power thing. Power. So yeah, that's kind of just how powerful Dobby and this guy are. Also the whole weakness moment with Dobby, there was nothing that was stated completely, it was just something like the dub that this hood figure said. Do you poss kinda do you have a possibility of having a weakness towards your flames? Which kinda hints into the whole Dobby to uh, having weak constitution, which I think is like referencing to his why not being able to handle heat because also apparently there was smoke coming out of it. Which like, yeah, I feel like could pass which honestly God, I feel like it's that skin that he wears on himself. Yeah, I know it's been said that could that could just be his own skin, like putting it closer so it doesn't, but I don't know. It feels like Dobby's skin is burn is burnt skin, that skin he currently wears is fake. I don't know if it was ever stated or ever confirmed, but I feel like that could that this looks more like him being we're just gonna be burned, it's just being on top of him. But yeah. Yeah. Now we got to compress guy where he's like, oh, oh, oh god damn it, Dobby, can you please come now? Can you lend some motivate some uh, accuracy or something? And Preska's like, alright, so let's see. Uh, where is everyone? Dobby's clearly over there, the giant wall, fl the giant flame attack, and the giant ice dragon, kind of confirm that. Uh, then we have uh, Spinner, who is with Tom uh, Moa, which means those two together, that's good. Uh, let's see, uh, to wait, Togo went off the rails. She totally jumped the gun, she's nowhere to be found. And wait, where's Twice? He's supposed to be right here, this, was he here a second ago or something? So yeah, Kompaska is currently on his own. Granted, that so is Dobby, but yeah, Kompaska is the one on his own. I do think that he's going to go fight uh, Koku from the Liberation Army, and we're gonna find out what that guy is all about. So I guess that kind of makes sense why he's on his own. But yeah, then we have then we cut to twice, and he's holding. The, well, he found Toga, which is why I said that Kompaska is on his own. So he found Toga, he's like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Basically panicking because Toga, you know, twice doesn't have anyone he can really call a family except the legal villains. And I would say Gira and Toga are like the two, the, uh, the biggest proof of that. I feel like Tomoa and Spino and Nami might also be somewhere there, but well, in Kompaska, but yeah, I feel like it's mostly Gear and Toga. So he's like panicking. If <laughs> and then we have the duality with twice. I mean, like he's in one. He says something like, "Oh no, her body's so cold." Uh, and he's like, "Oh my, oh my God, she's so hot." Take or whatever you want. You want it? No one's gonna be judging you. Which also we found out in this chapter that Toga is, well in the last chapter she's 17 and twice again looks older. Yep, he's wrong. Well, I guess. What's the, alright, I believe the age, wait, how does the age go again when it comes to the legality? I think it's something around, um, uh, if you're 16 to 18, if you date someone and have the thing, with someone that general age area, you can have it, but if you you are somewhere around 16 to 18, and then you have it, well, 15 to 6 to 18, and then you have someone that's older, I think that's the wrong part. So yeah, that's, you're right, that's wrong, yep. All right, that point is time to when you can perform the fun time on the bat with a woman has, that has been over. But yeah, we get that little condition. That they are, I guess, funny jokes or tragic jokes, I don't know. Just a bunch of things like that. Now, also, Twice says that you disappeared and I've been looking for you. 
No, we see like a panel with a bunch of uh with a bunch of the members of the Liberation Army being in one group and kinda of looking at something. I think that could be curious. I don't really know. It's kinda of ambiguous. Which makes me kinda of funny which makes makes it kinda of funny that this is the thing we are not gonna be showing. Like we are not even going to show something that could resemble Curious's body, at least like just the bottom parts of her legs or something. Like just the bot just this hand or something that could show us that she is, but we are going to have two more like the kind of thousand of people. But and we are going to have something like someone cutting someone's arms off with their and being the ever every shit out of them. Like that's just funny to me. I mean that yeah, we're gonna show you how many people talk about kills, but we're not going to show you show you a body that just the feet of a dead person. Just to show us that yeah, she's that one hundred percent. But yeah, twice goes there and he finds her and he's like, uh what do I do? What do I do? And he I think takes the handkerchief that Toga gave them during the Chikasi arc and she like wipes her uh, I think he tries to wipe her f face because she's you know covered with blood and he's like is this enemy's blood? which is possible what where did she wait, was she the one bleeding or did, did that explosion of those people, people made come on her but, but yeah anyways he's like I do you remember this Toga? God. And then upstairs like she doesn't, and yeah, it's all basically that. He like says you're the only family I have left. Also, when I was reading this for the first time, you know what was the uh, minimum? The first thing I came to realize, think it is, Gwen Stacy's death. Yeah, that's what I come immediately to think of it. As soon as Twice was holding her and throwing her in his arms and all that. I thought Brent states his death. Immediately. Makes sense if you ask me, but yeah. Then we go into the Tomayasu. And we find out that his code name is Skeptic. I don't believe he shows us anything that will rely, rely on the name Skeptic, but alright. And he's like and he likes gives us the load on who twice really is. Jin Boogie Bob, I think it is. Which hell, my favorite about twice finding Jinbo, twice finding Tomoyasu was actually correct. So we found like his quirk is kind of a human size or human shape. Which the nation had him say it's puppeteer, but it's more makes more sense to be sh human shape or something. And it goes like this: if there's a human size object like a table and a refrigerator. Or fridge or whatever, and he like can somehow turn it into a person, which is why we see a bunch of twice resembling clones being there. So yeah, he's currently kind of, uh, somehow doing that through I think through a computer with his minion that kind of looks like a gorilla. I mean, with and they also kind of seem to look sim. Uh, so yeah, although now that I think about it, could be a translation error or he turned refrigerators and all that into it. Because we see a bunch of men walking to the room in a earlier chap in, in one chapter that seem to wear the same suits that twice as well. So maybe he can change people's faces or something that makes them look different but so far um, but so far I haven't found a single translation that had to do that. It also in the refrigerators, uh, maybe just a little design choice or something. So yeah, he gives us the lowdown on who Twice is. Like he knows that he used this quirk freely like all people should, which he mentions it. And he states it's that his quirk can be, that he, in a way he's a poor opposite of Toga. Which makes sense, which kind of makes sense. Well, Togo becomes a person. He can just he can just make more the, the person that person, but yeah, 
I think it's, the, it's something we can use as a bell to, to, to help us with this drill. So this kind of strategy doesn't appear again. So if it basically if Redastro dies, they could just use twice to make another Redastro, meaning that if there was twice left, there will always be a das Redastro. So yeah, he's just like thing even you don't realize better for how you can't realize how important you are or how valuable your quirk is. And he's in the end he's like twice or Jane, I'm I'm drafting you to the Liberation Army. Which is kinda of funny the fact that twice and Toga both could possibly join the Liberation Army if you ask me. Because apparently they are interested in having it to join. I mean Curious didn't really seem to like specifically want uh, said that she would like Toga to join but she would probably want to and twice he is just gonna be drafted. Draft how drafted you mean? Oh, well, let's see a bunch of his copies of him, making him remember that shamanic time when the clones took him hostage and like put a dagger through his skull, make him bleed all that, and pulling his mask off, even insulating that even more. Yeah, this is not fun. So yeah, that's what is going on. Now, this is something I didn't realize until up to now, but Twice was a person that was using his quirk freely. Like, there's no question denied, the whole backstory does all revolve around him using his quirk freely. So, you think that a, a, a cult or whatever, or an army that's focusing on making everybody allowed to use their quirks and then you have twice someone that has been affected extremely horribly by having the quirk like you would think that someone like that would be like a big proof why you should join but they but this guy Tomayasu skeptic Basically, it's like, you don't realize how valuable your quirk is. Not realizing that this is like, painful for, 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 for twice. And, he, and he's just going to be forced in twice to work for them, no matter what. I feel like, I don't know exactly how this fight will go, because in the panel it says that he's already apparently defeated, which would make sense, considering what's happening, but I feel like if, that twice was the fear that Toga would be immediately killed. And I doubt this is what will happen. So yeah, maybe I mean, when these two get face to face or when he gets contact with it, twice will be something like You think dude, not all quirks and not have a cannot have a positive outcome just because you're allowed to use them. My look, I use my quirk freely in the way you some would. And you know what happened? I fucking got permanently damaged to a point the only family that can accept me is the League of Villains. You just think that just because you are gonna use the quest there are gonna be people that are gonna be traumatized by it? So I can imagine something like that happening. Now, let's also talk about the whole redastro thing. So yeah, this Tomasu guy, like I said, thinks about using twice his quirk to bring so he case if Redasha dies, he can bring him back. Which is something not I feel like none of us really mentioned it up to now. Why doesn't Kun twice theoretically bring the people that die back? Because if I remember exactly, when Twice described his quirk, because I don't, or because I don't believe his quirk was ever like explained like Togas was in a chapter when she was revealed to be posing as Kami, or in this chapter where the, skep this guy, the skeptic and the hooded figure ex of course were explained how they can use that. There was nothing like, I don't believe there was any caption with twice, but yeah. When he ex explained his quirk, he said, if I, as long, he said, basically, 
my quark allows me to double a person. I, if I take precise measurements of the person, I can make a big copy with them. Because if I don't get to take, I need to make sure my measurements are completely 100% correct. If I would fake, because if I don't, then I would just be copying an incomplete trust and it will not work. So, I don't believe it was ever stated that he needs to copy the person specifically to make them. I think he only needs to know their measurements. So, theoretically, he could also be able to bring Dastro back. Because I'm pretty sure his height, his height was... At least you can at least find that somewhere. I'm pretty sure that the quarterly version I would be the one people who could find out how big he is. Like maybe, maybe like maybe when he was arrested, compared to the police officers, how uh, yeah, they would probably be able to figure out how big Dastro was. And I don't know if this was a translation error because they stay because every time he meant this to my also guy mentions Dastro. He only resets Dastro, not read Dastro, which is the name of his boss. So, I don't know, maybe he, they are planning on bringing, using twice to bring Dastro back. And they're just going to keep Red Dastro also alive and use him to bring it back. But, yeah. So, yeah, that kind of seems to be hinted at. I also wonder if that could also mean that Magni could come back. Back, well, not anything more. I mean, when she's dead, but as a lush, less stamina type person, like, I believe that twice ever took. I think that if that was something that he could do, he would probably already do it, but it's possible he doesn't know. Maybe he knows that even if he would try to bring the dead back to life, it's not going to work. Like, maybe, or no, we already know. No, before we got into this arc, we know, like, the most. I believe we know like the most amount of the backstory from Twice's act and how he used his quirk to copy himself. So, yeah, yeah. So maybe in this arc, uh, it's going to be expanded to to the fact that we see how exactly how he can get that gain that mentality. Like maybe he first was an average person, he had a nice woman he loved and all that, and then she died. Now he was aware of the measurements. Now he was aware of her measurements and all that, like maybe he look like maybe he measured her once and or maybe he had found her measurements or something and then he used this quirk to to try to bring her back but it didn't work. And then he knew he couldn't do anything with it on his own, so he just figured out I did it once. If I'm careful and I make sure no one ever finds out. If I do it more, no one will figure out. So maybe he did it on himself. And that's, and since no one really knew, except this quickly version, I mean, which I believe only knew went because they made the research on the League of Villains. Maybe that's the thing. Because you would think that if Twice's limitation is only the measurements, like you would think that he would be able to find measurements of Magne somewhere on the internet, like somewhere. You think he'd be able to do that? I believe we got her, his, her measurements in one chapter. The, oh, not in chapter, in a volume or something. I believe we did. I might be wrong about this, but yeah, I think we did, so I feel like if the only thing, so yeah, I feel like this could be something we will find out in this chapter. Can Twice bring back the dad just through the measurements? Or does he, or maybe he needs to know the person specifically. We don't know. So this will be interesting, I'm interested in finding out if Twice can bring back the dad. Well, not bring back the dad, just bring the person back the died. But yeah. This, this is... So yeah, anyways, tell me in the comments below, what do you think is up with the hood figure being not so? What do you think is up with Twice's quirk possibly bring back to that? What do you think? Leave it all in the comments below. 
Now anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope you leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And that's it, I cannot wait to see all of you people next time. Bye.